on spiritual creation, specifically, it's a um, a B.H. Roberts assessment of current AI intelligences. Um, What I'm pulling from from B.H. Roberts works here is his uh, 70s course in theology. That was a five year curriculum in the early 20th century. Um, its aim was for uh, training the 70s, the quorum of the 70s, uh, and specifically B.H. Roberts mentions in their, in their mental activity, intellectual development, and the attainment of spiritual power. Um, so the fourth year is interesting me on this topic because it covers a variety of topics, uh, including intelligence or intelligences and, and spirit. And he starts with this, this um of a scope definition where he says that the term intelligence is to be used in this discussion is that of a mind or an intelligent being. So he wasn't just approaching it from a purely platonic sort of ideal, but also what is intelligence in an embodied being. Um, So he offers a set of definitions. So these, uh, these are the seven he, he offers. First is knowledge. Um, just, you know, able to understand facts and ideas, consciousness, awareness of self and not self, generalization, be able to see patterns and extrapolate, extrapolate generalities, Um, perception of a priori principles, basically being able to see beyond specific examples and understand the underlying principles, Uh, imagination, um, ratiocination, which is a bit of a uh, interesting word there. Uh, I would say reasoning would be the right the right word there, uh, what we would use. But being able to combine facts and, and apply them to new situations. And then volition, be able to act for oneself or have one's own desires. So it, what, I'm, it, what occurred to me, we have a, a Turing test, and that's rooted in certain computer theory. I wonder, um, in a similar sort of vein, could we take those definitions and apply what we might call kind of a, a Roberts test? Now, these are this is not the only way to think about in, the idea of intelligence. Um, what's unique here is is twofold. I think one, it, it's a pretty well rounded set of definitions. I think these hold up even today in, in general discussions around how we might think about intelligence. Uh, and two, it it comes from a uniquely kind of a uh, Mormon theological background, um, or rather it, it it comes from that that history. So we're picking something out of a theological context. Um, and what I wonder is, you know, could we apply this um, and and understand and uh, evaluate it, in, not in a way to prove intelligence, but in a way to discuss it in the context of this, this uh, historical background. And one other point here is, the, the discussion between the difference of intelligence, intelligences, and spirit, those theological, um, sometimes hair splittings and, and, and whatnot, that's outside the scope of this, this presentation. I'm not going to be uh, going into that. So what I did is I spoke with different chat agents. So here you see um, chat GPT. I introduced them to the concept of B.H. Roberts and, and asked them what they understood about his um, his. Um, a course of the you know the the the, the course that he wrote for the uh, 70s but uh and then made sure that they understood exactly what those seven were and then asked them how would you rate yourself on these traits um and so here chat gpt 4.5 says you know on the knowledge and generalization scores pretty high um lower on the idea of like do you understand are you able to understand the underlying principles versus just you know what your your training is and then consciousness was uh it lacked itself it's a a zero which is interesting kind of a a paradoxical you know it doesn't even have the conception of consciousness right and so um it's interesting to kind of ask that uh paradoxical question and then imagination rather low uh sees itself as really just uh, learning patterns and repeating them. I mean, you think about LLMs and what's going on underneath. It's, you know, it's not, I don't think very many people are arguing it's genuine imagination and genuine, um, um, you know, originality there. So, um, and then uh, ratiocination, I'll just say reasoning, um, it saw itself as being able to do that and have some training specifically for that. And then finally, volition um, saw itself similarly to consciousness as not having its own unique desires and and 
desire to act. Um, so I did put in the upper right hand corner a, a QR code for a, a full transcript. Uh, so I asked it these how to self evaluate, and then asked it some follow up questions around how do you think about um, you know the challenges that Mormonism might face as AI becomes rank, ranks higher and higher in these areas, and some of the theological and cultural uh, impacts there. So then there's Gemini, um, and so I asked the same thing, and its scores were somewhat similar. Um, uh, you know, lower on the uh, a priori principles, high on knowledge, low on consciousness, um, you know, moderately on generalization. And then uh, imagination was mid-range as well. Uh, rationality, ratiocination um, was, was mid as well. And then volition. So pretty similar to uh, chat GPT here. Um, no big surprises uh, in how it self-evaluates. Hugging chat was interesting. Uh, I asked it the, the same question. So one of the things I did was make sure that the questions I asked up to the self-evaluation between these models were exactly the same. Uh, so there's no deviation. Here I had to deviate a little bit. So I asked this, how would you rate yourself? And Hugging chat says, well, I don't have self-awareness, so I can't rate myself, which is interesting. Uh, you know, wonder, is that uh, coming directly from the LLM or was that a... Um, uh, an intelligent search that came down to, hey, when you're asked this kind of thing, you know, you provide this canned answer. But as as some of us know, uh, or many of us know, um, you can tweak the question to change its frame of reference, and then it will oblige. So I said, well, don't rate, rate yourself, but how might someone evaluate your model on these traits? It's interesting, the semantic difference between those and how it skirts this. But um, again, it's 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 interesting to ask these different models and to get similarly arranged, not exact same scores, but similarly arranged scores. Um, consciousness is, is is low. I mean, it's, it's obvious, I think, given its previous answer of like, I don't have consciousness. So that's consistent. Um, and knowledge is high and then uh, generalization lower. And then I, a priori principles um, kind of mid range there. And then finally, imagination, ratiocination, and, and volition um, were also fit within range. And due to the time on, on this, I mean, we could pick apart these different things, what it said about itself. I think that's uh, kind of beyond uh, the scope of this presentation. But the full again, the full transcripts there and QR code. Um, and you can scan that and, and see exactly all the details of, of what, it, what it said. So let's pull them all back. So this is not a, I wouldn't call this a rigorous scientific study or anything like that, but um, it is interesting to take a, a set of ideas that B.H. Roberts over a hundred years ago said in a, uh, a distinct uh, Mormon context, in a theological context, and then apply them as we have more, I would say, you know, more intelligent agents. Now, are they uh, general intelligence, I, I, I think that's not what we're dealing with with LLMs, but, um, I, you know, as these get smarter, and it's, this isn't all about LLMs, this is a test that could be applied to any future interactive agent that might be uh, invented um, and, and created. And it brings it back to that spiritual creation, like, what are we creating with these agents as they get more and more intelligent? And let's imagine in a future where we would say, or they might rate themselves and provide justification of why they are high on all of these. At what point do you cross that threshold? And it's interesting theological context of at that point, has spiritual intelligence been created? And what does that mean? What are the implications? Um, I asked some of the these agents what they thought about it. Um, and so my proposal to end here is that um, I think perhaps the MTA ought to pick a, a, a these principles here and perform a kind of Roberts test periodically on the state of interactive intelligent agents, um, not as a way to prove their intelligence, um, but as a way to kind of uh, ask the question of what are these things and what does, what are their, it was the implication of their existence on uh, theology and culture and religion. So that's it for uh, for this uh, presentation, and I uh, hope to be able to be there in person next time. Thank you.